Hello and welcome to today's Cyber Seniors webinar. Today we are going to be focusing on age tech. So it's just going to be an introduction to what age tech is. But before we get started, I'm happy to announce that today's webinar is proudly sponsored by BreezeLine. BreezeLine is the eighth largest cable provider in the US, offering internet, TV, and voice services to residents and businesses in 12 states. BreezeLine provides you with great internet services, and we here at Cyber Seniors can in turn teach you how to use the internet. So it's a pretty fantastic partnership. So before we get started, we'll see a quick video from BreezeLine, and then we'll jump in. Wi-Fi your way home, powered by Bloom Home Pass. Technology that spreads ultra-fast Wi-Fi to every inch of your home. We make having a Wi-Fi supercharged home easy by including a super pod with your Wi-Fi gateway package. Learn more at BreezeLine.com. And if you'd like to learn more about what BreezeLine offers and what services are available in your area, after this webinar, you can visit them at www.breezeline.com. That's B-R-E-E-Z-E-L-I-N-E.com. All right, let's jump in. All right, so as I said, today is an introduction to age tech. So to start off, what is age tech? So age tech is technology that has been designed with the needs and wants of older adults in mind. Essentially, it's technology built to improve the lives of aging adults. Um, and this can take many, many forms. So a few examples of age tech may be fall trackers, uh, smart home devices, activity and health monitoring devices or apps, medication trackers, uh, some forms of telemedicine, robotic companions, as we can see a little picture of the dog here uh, on the slide, uh, and brain fitness apps. So this is just a, a really small list of what could be considered age tech. Age tech could be really uh, also of like personal devices, and that's more what we're focusing here on here today. So things like, you know, smart watches with, a, with an activity tracker on it or a fall tracker, uh, but it also means technology uh, that may be built into infrastructure that can be used by medical care professionals or caregivers uh, to care for older adults. So it's a huge um, industry of technology uh, built around uh, caring for older adults or for the needs of older adults. But again, like I said today, we're going to be focusing more on age tech as it would be used by the individual uh, to facilitate um, better aging, aging in place, stuff like that. Now, why is age tech uh, so important and why are we talking about it? And why is there such a, a boom in, in the industry and in talking about age tech? So we are on the precipice of what has been coined the silver tsunami. So basically we have an aging population now, uh, as of this year, 2022, the United States uh, has a population of people age 65 plus of 50, around 54 million. So that's 16.5% of the population. Now that number is expected to grow to 20% by the year 2050. Uh, and so that will be about 85.7 million uh, people over the age of 65. This is because baby boomers are moving into that senior category. It's also because we have, you know, lower birth rates now. So there's less people being born, more people aging. And so we're seeing a higher percent of the population being in that uh, senior or older adult category of 65 plus. Now, because of that, uh, we are at risk of experiencing what's called a, a care gap. So uh, this is just one example of how to kind of measure that care gap. So this is the caregiver support ratio. So the caregiver support ratio measures how many potential caregivers there are for every high risk person over the age of 80. And this is potential caregivers. This is not active caregivers. This is just, these are just people that could potentially provide care to someone who needs it. So in 2010, the ratio was more than seven and one. But by the age, year 2030, that ratio is expected to drop to four to one. Um, so we are seeing less and less people uh, in the position of able, being able to provide care to older adults and a higher number of older adults that may require care. So responding 
through technology. So more adults requiring care and fewer people in caretaker roles means that finding ways for older adults to maintain independence and to find care through other means like technology will be essential to riding out this wave. Now, again, this could mean implementation of technology by caregivers or medical care professionals or by uh, other industries, but it could also mean just the implementation of technology by individuals uh, to care for themselves. And what this technology uh, could potentially allow is a bigger capacity for people to age in place. So aging in places, of course, being able to age at home without the need of uh, going into facility. Of course, in order to do this, we require certain resources and technology can be a, a big one. Uh, and it's really important that we have the opportunity to be able to provide people with the opportunity to age in place. One, because it leads to better health outcomes for older adults, uh, which the research supports. It also uh, means that that's less strain on the system itself for people who do or may have to enter a care system, whether that's a retirement facility, a nursing home, or anything like that. So we talked about some examples of age tech, right? Uh, fitness trackers, fall trackers, uh, robotic companions, any sort of smart home technology that can aid with aging in place. Um, and we talked about why age tech is increasingly important uh, and why we need to be able to have better and more access to it. But what are the pros, the actual pros of age tech and what it can do for, for a person or for a population. So age tech allows for, as we said, greater potential to age in place. Uh, with access to technology, things like fall trackers, things like medication reminders that can allow uh, us to live out our older days without the need for additional care or, or regular care. Uh, it means we are better suited to be able to stay at home and live. Uh, at home longer. Uh, it allows for continued independence among older adults, especially when it's being used by older adults themselves, right? We talked about technology that may be implemented uh, by uh, industries like the healthcare industry, but especially when we talk about how, uh, technology that can be used by an individual to assist themselves, it can allow, allow for continued independence. It also has the potential to keep people safer, right? Fall trackers are a great way to keep you safe if you're living at home alone. And if you fell, you wouldn't have um, anyone there immediately. Allows for health and wellness monitoring. So again, a big part about going into say a, a, a care home might be access to regular health care. With technology, we can use things like telemedicine or health trackers, nutrition tracking apps, Again, medication reminding apps that allow us to take um, ownership over our healthcare and wellness and keep good track of it. It also allows people to keep connected to family and friends. So a huge factor in declining health among older adults as well can be social isolation. And with the use of technology, we can continue to interact face-to-face -face over video calling and stuff like that with our friends and family. And it's a great way also to combat that. And it can help maintain access to essential services. Again, as we age, one of those things that, that may happen is that our, our, our mobility lessons, we're not as able to you know, get around places, but through technology, we can do things like order groceries directly to our home, have our medications delivered, do telemedicine appointments so we don't have to go to the doctor every day and make that trip. And of course, it just provides peace of mind uh, and support for caregivers. So a huge, uh, burden of what an aging population is going to be is going to be on caregivers, specifically unpaid caregivers that may be family members or friends of aging individuals who are going to need to step up and be able to provide care and age tech can help them. Now, of course, because we talked about the pros and potential of age tech, we also have to talk about the cons slash limitations of age tech. So to start, uh, there is a thin line between assistance and monitoring. Uh, and whether this is you know, a, a real factor or something that's just felt by the individual to whom the technology is being imposed on, this is something we really have to consider. So technology that's being used you know, within uh, industries like the healthcare industry may not have this effect, but 
potentially technology that's being, say, given to an older adult by a caregiver for the purpose of being able to better care for them, maybe a motion slash fall tracker, that may be helpful for the caregiver, but that may feel invasive to a, an older adult who has to use that. Um, technology that requires tech literacy may not be accessible to all. Things like uh, fitness trackers, smart watches, you know, uh, uh, fall trackers, medication trackers, any of those things that are used by the individual may require a level of, of digital literacy that not everyone has or has the access to be able to, to learn. And then cost is also another con slash barrier uh, for those who use age tech. Um, and unfortunately, that cost uh, means that uh, those who actually probably need the technology most may not be able to have access to it. So we will have to find ways to make this technology more accessible uh, and widely used by people. A one size fit all approach won't work for everyone. So technology is built for uh, everyone to use. And so that may mean that it's not necessarily a uh, fitting for every situation for every person. One device one system may work really well for a certain individual and not at all for someone else. And then lastly, there could be a resistance to technology. And this kind of goes in line with the monitoring thing, right? Um, when individuals who are going to be using this technology either, you know, maybe don't have a high level of tech literacy or don't have the support to be able to learn it or feel like it's being imposed on them rather than it being something that they uh, want to use and have access to, then resistance may pop up. And so getting past that and being able to make this technology, uh, again, friendly and inviting and accessible to all is going to be a big barrier to overcome in really getting the full benefit of age tech. So now we're gonna go over some age tech for the individual. So these are uh, devices or apps or programs that you could access yourself right now, uh, and they'd be considered age tech and you could use them. So things like wearables, so that's technology you wear, uh, health apps, whether that be uh, on your phone or tablet or, or a website, telemedicine, so accessing medical services online, uh, and smart home devices. And we'll go over these. This will be a broad overview, uh, so we won't get in too depth, but just so you have a better idea of what these kind of services are and how you can access them. So first of all, wearables. So wearables, like I said, are devices that you can wear. A main example of a wearable is a smartwatch, which is basically a computer in the form of a watch. You've heard of uh, the Apple Watch, the iWatch, uh, or the Fitbit. Those are all examples of smartwatches. Modern smartwatches provide uh, a local touchscreen interface for daily use so that you can use the actual watch and tap on different apps or programs you have on there. Um, while associating it often with a, a smartphone app, which provides management. So you generally wouldn't use a smartphone on its own. You'd use it in conjunction with a, a smartphone, sorry, a smartwatch on its own. You'd use it in conjunction with a smartphone or tablet to manage certain aspects of it. And these watches can provide uh, a huge array of features, uh, some that are worth mentioning that are really beneficial specifically for health uh, are the built in ECG feature so you can track your heart rate through the app. Um, one that's not listed here actually is you can sometimes if you wear it at night, sometimes it can help you track your sleeping habits, you can have a fall detection feature on it which is kind of shown in the photo to the right it says. On the watch, it says, it looks like you've taken a hard fall. Do you want to send out emergency SOS? So stuff like that. You can also receive and send text messages or kind of calls through it. So especially if your phone's nearby, but out of reach, you need to get it. You can initiate texts and calls from these devices often. So that's another kind of safety measure that could, they can be used for. They will uh, monitor activity and exercise. So if you go out for a walk, you can see how far you walked after, what your average pace was. You can keep track of that information. It also offers some GPS maps so you can use it while you're you know, strolling about so you don't get lost. Another thing that you may want to use that for is to give your location to a loved one uh, so that they have it. So in case you do get lost, um, they will be able to track your location and help you. Again, that's a matter of, of personal, uh, personal privacy and, and what you like, but sometimes that can be helpful. I do it with my sisters because it makes me feel safer, but to each their own.
The next category of stuff are health apps. So uh, there's a lot of reason people use health, app, health apps, um, including to, to get educated about health impacts of certain foods or medications or behavior, uh, to track their consistency of health, to set and track health goals, uh, or to motivate themselves to form healthier and more consistent habits. And some of the apps we're, we're looking at, uh, we're talking about when we talk about health apps can be used in conjunction with a, a smartwatch, especially when we're tracking fitness goals or health. And of course, this is health related apps. Um, and so what does that have to do with age? Um, of course, anything that can improve our health outcomes or service uh, older adults is considered age tech. So though these apps can be used by young people as well, uh, when they are being utilized, um, by older adults uh, for the purpose of you know, healthy aging, then they can be considered health age tech. So what kind of health apps are there? So there's thousands of apps directed at health out there. Um, obviously not all of them are worth your while, but there's some great apps that can help you manage things like nutrition, uh, sleep, and again, like I said, can be used in conjunction with a smartwatch, fitness, stress and anxiety, also possibly could be used with conjunction of a smartwatch if you have a heart rate monitor on there, uh, medication, and even, uh, you know, bad habits. So you can use them to track, uh, you know, how much you're doing a certain bad habit if you're trying to quit something like quit smoking. So some of these apps include apps like MediSafe, which is a medication tracker app. So you can put in your medications, how often you're supposed to take them, what they look like, and then it sends you reminders of when you could, should take them and might even give you a picture so you know which pill you're supposed to be taking at one time. There's apps like Map My Walk, which is a fitness tracking app. It allows you to see how far you've walked, uh, create walking maps so you can plan out a walk that's the proper distance and difficulty for you. Apps like Headspace, which are for mindful meditation. So if you're trying to reduce stress, you could use that. And apps like Fujicate, which is a nutrition-based app that helps you educate you about nutrition, food, um, help find healthy recipes, and track your eating, uh, if that's something that you want to focus on. So obviously, these aren't you know, necessarily age tech, tech apps, not only focused at older adults, but based on how they're used, something especially like Metasafe uh, can be really targeted for uh, an aging person, and we can use them as tools, as technology to aid uh, as we are getting older. Now, the next thing to talk about is telemedicine. So just to give you a quick definition of what telemedicine is, uh, the American Academy of Family Physicians defines telemedicine as the practice of medicine using technology to deliver care at a distance. A physician in one location uses a telecommunications infrastructure to deliver care to a patient at a distant site. So uh, what telemedicine allows you to do is it allows you to see medical care professionals remotely via your device. This could mean a phone, tablet, or laptop. And you can see general physicians, nurses, dermatologists, therapists, psychiatrists, all through a website or app, and really like a lot of specialists too. So there are specific apps that serve the purpose of telemedicine, but you can really talk to your doctor and find a way that you can use telemedicine. So most primary care physicians will have the capacity to do this. So if you're unsure about how to get started, a great way is just to talk to your medical care professional. So what are the benefits of telemedicine? So first of all, no exposure to germs in clinics or hospital waiting areas or other medical settings. It also minimizes unnecessary hospital visits. And this is not just by being able to access a, a care physician you know, through telemedicine. Um, regular care and regular checkups also lead to fewer hospital visits. So if we're able to practice preventative care by seeing a medical professional more regularly, that may prevent future hospital visits. Uh, it reduces medical costs in travel, so you don't have to drive uh, into uh, the, the town or city to get to see your doctor. And it, because of that, it improves access to care. So it increases patient access to specialists, especially if you're someone who lives in a rural or remote area, right? You may have your primary doctor uh, in town, but if you had to see a specialist, you may have to drive all the way to the city to see them. And so it can also aid with that. 
It also provides ongoing support to patients and family members, again, because it is accessible, because we're able to access our healthcare professionals uh, more easily and also in a more time efficient way for them and for us. And it increases chances of continued independent or community home living, which is a big part of what we're talking about when we talk about effective age tech, is the ability to allow people to age in place uh, and age in some sense independently. All right, so the last kind of aspect of technology that can be used in an age tech kind of way, we're going to talk about our is smart home technology. So smart home technology is the general term given to basic home amenities that have been provided with communication technology, enabling either automation or remote controlling. So basically anything in your home, it could be any sort, it could be light bulbs, thermostats, whatever uh, that you can control uh, either with automation or remote controlling. So smart home technology includes home entertainment and security systems it includes appliances like washing machines fridges and garage door openers it also includes environmental controls like air conditioning heating and lighting so some examples of smart home devices things like lights security systems doorbells locks thermostats and obviously this is not the full list this is just a sampling and some of the kind of big hitters when it comes to common smart home devices uh, but we can already kind of see the ways these could could aid in terms of allowing someone to age in place or live independently right you can lock your doors or turn on and off your lights without uh, having to get up so if you have you know mobility issues that's a problem solved uh, especially something with like locks or security system if you experience something like forgetfulness you can make sure that there's an automation that your locks and security system turn on at a certain time so that you forgot to lock your door it's not a problem it can lock automatically uh, at a certain time or it locks when your smartphone leaves the house with you. Stuff like this can all assist in aging in place and can all be used in the realm of age tech. And of course, there's gonna be more and more stuff on the market. There's also stuff that kind of is included in smart home uh, that's like motion detectors, which can be something that helps with, you know, fall prevention or, or fall detection. So there's other devices that are included in this kind of smart home umbrella that would be used and maybe more age tech specific, but these are all things that may be used by like a lay person commonly that could be used to modify one's home to make it more aging friendly. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions about this topic, if you're interested in any of the apps or devices we talked about previously that we kind of went over quickly and you want to learn more, you can always call us at Cyber Seniors at 844-217-3057, or you can visit us online at www.cyberseniors.org. And of course, again, this webinar was proudly sponsored by BreezeLine, and you can visit them online at www.breezeline.com. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.